Welcome, one and all, to Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 641. Uh, this is Oxhorn, and I'm uh, grateful to have you all on the program today. Now, um, today is the release of uh, Elden Ring, <clears throat> and uh, we got it a little bit earlier during the day uh, over here on the uh, Pacific Northwest, but uh, I haven't been able to catch a break to go live until just now. And uh, so uh, we're going to be playing Elden Ring uh, in uh, for Scotch and Smoke Rings. Now, I would typically, on uh, a new game release day, I would typically just go live with the game so that we can dive right into the footage. But a lot of things have been going on in the world recently, and I think that I know that my community is going to want to talk about that a little bit. So the way t uh, Scotch and Smoke Rings typically goes is we have an hour-long Q&A at the beginning of the program, and then we dive into the game about an hour later. So if you're here just to watch Elden Ring and, and you're watching the video on demand, skip ahead about an hour. That's when the gameplay is about to start. But for now, we can continue with the show and have a little bit of chat about uh, life and what's going on in the world and everything. Uh, news, of course, is that um, uh, Bethesda is retiring their Bethesda.net launcher. But more importantly, and more horribly, of course, Russia has invaded the Ukraine. And there is now war in the Ukraine. There are already many casualties. And um, it's absolutely awful and horrible and should never have happened. So the world is reeling with that news. And uh, I'm... You know, we can talk about that. We can talk about Bethesda. We can talk about Elden Ring if you want to. This is the Q&A portion of the program. The floor is now yours. Good to have everybody on the program today. Wonderful to see everyone on Facebook. Quincy, Luke, Jared, Toby, Jessica. So wonderful to see you. And of course, it's awesome to see everybody on YouTube. All of the regulars and the members and the Patreon subscribers. Automatic Beats, Julian Z with the Gold Derby. Toxic, Sean, Nick Barnhouse with the Gold Derby. Ian Chamberlain, Sarah, Shadows, 787, two. 200 Angel, Brandon Beltfed, Quintayos, and Alt Grendel, all with gold derbies. Craig Euler, uh, Toxic Sean, and Ian Chamberlain with the first super chat of the of the day. Says, it's been a year, and I'm so glad you're playing this. Thank you, Ian Chamberlain. Has it been an entire year? Well, I'm grateful that you've been a subscriber for so long, a member for 12 months. Awesome. A bronze ox and a silver derby. A silver derby. I love it. Toxic Sean with a super chat says, I'm bloody here, mate. Seriously, yay. Oh, hey, Ox. Hey there, Toxic Sean. <laughs> it's good to see you. I know you guys are surprised to see me playing the Elden Ring, but listen, I have been enjoying Dark Souls, right? I mean, I haven't had any official live streams of Dark Souls. I've only done it during Oxhorn After Dark and then during my charity event. I, I did, I played a little bit of Dark Souls and I'm not good at all. Like it's, it's really tough. And it's difficult, but I'm still intrigued by it. And in my free time, when I've got footage rendering or something, I'll play a little Dark Souls for my own personal enjoyment when I'm not broadcasting. And I'm watching a lot of guides to try and get me through it. And I'm kind of getting comfortable with the game. And I'm enjoying it. And now that Elden Ring is out, of course, well, I have to, I have to try it. Now, bear that in mind, I'm going to be awful. I'm going to die a lot. So if you're, if you're here to watch like a pro Dark Souls veteran just tear this game up i mean you're in the wrong spot my friend just just go somewhere else if you want to see somebody have what is likely going to be a typical player's experience with a souls like game that is dying a lot and a ton of repetition then hey you're at the right spot welcome my friend <laughs> do rag is in the chat with a super chat says uh if you liked Dark Souls, you'll probably like this. I did like Dark Souls, which is why I'm really looking forward to it. No Name says, people who use selfie sticks really need to have a good long look at themselves. And with that, we stumble upon the first dad joke of the night. Thank you for that one, No Name. Jocelyn Ryan on Facebook with a donation of stars says, Hey Ox, the hubby has already crashed and I'm not far behind. It's been a long, cold day here and we've got another tomorrow. Despite all the awfulness in the world, no, we hope everyone as well. And I'm uh, in the same boat with you there, Jocelyn. Uh, sweet dreams to your husband, Matt, and I hope you can join him soon for a pleasant slumber and that you have a wonderful day in the morning. Thanks for stopping by, though. Jared says World War Three coming with a donation of stars. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's it's <laughs> none of us can predict the future, you know, but um, 
You know, we didn't... Nate, the Ukraine did not become a part of NATO, right? We, we didn't have that happen. The Ukraine did not join the NATO. To avoid kind of this, this was the reason we didn't want them to join NATO. I mean, we kind of wanted them to join NATO because they're a free independent nation and they wanted to join NATO and, you know, they're a Western democracy and it would have been good for them to join NATO, but we still didn't allow them to join NATO or they didn't join NATO because we wanted to avoid this, but that didn't work. Here we are. So, uh, anyway, uh, from everything that I've heard, I, I watched a number, I've been having these live streams of, you, you know, downtown Kiev and everything going on on my computer all day whenever I had a moment to stop by. And I've been watching all of the press conferences. And from everything that I've seen, uh, you know, NATO has absolutely no plans of going into the Ukraine and militarily supporting the Ukraine with actual forces. But they are bolstering the nations that are actually part of NATO, right? 30 different nations represented in NATO, many of whom are former members of the Soviet Union before the Soviet Union crumbled. And, you know, naturally, you know, Lithuania and Poland and Czech, the Czech Republic and Slovakia and all, they're probably really concerned, right? Legitimately concerned that this is going on so close to them. So, yeah, NATO is definitely beefing up our allies at the moment, and that's definitely something they should be doing. Is that going to lead to, to World War III? I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I hope not. I don't know. Maybe. It's just an absolutely awful time for Ukraine in particular. Jeez. Uh, Daniel Redondo with a super chat. Thank you very much, Daniel Redondo. Julian Z with a gold derby and a member of, uh, for 47 months says, Hi, Ox. So good to see you on as a distraction from the Ukraine invasion. My prayers is with all of the civilians in the crossfire. Did you like the Bethesda launcher or do you prefer steam? Cheers, my friend. Uh, thank you, Julian. Um, yeah, my, uh, my sympathies and, and my hopes are with Ukraine right now as well. I, I just, it's, you want to have hope that Ukraine is just going to pull out a David and Goliath thing here and just come out on top and knock Russia back. But, uh, I mean, what's the, what's the likelihood of that? I don't know. Russia has already captured Chernobyl. Uh, they did capture a Ukrainian airport, but uh, the recent news that I have seen is, is that the Ukrainian military has actually gotten that back from the hands of Russia. At least one Russian squadron has surrendered because they didn't want to start killing Ukrainians. And that's really interesting to see that Russian soldiers are kind of balking at the, the idea of fighting Ukrainians. And have you seen the protests going on in Russia right now? Just thousands of, of Russians who are protesting this completely unjustifiable, unprovoked war that Putin has decided to wage in the name of Russia. Um, so, yeah, it's... Part of me feels bad to be even doing a broadcast right now at this time when... I've, but but then again, we've all been looking at the news coming out of the Ukraine right uh, for, for days now, and it's just really awful. Uh, as for the launcher, I don't know. I kind of like the Bethesda launcher. I'm going to miss it. I, a part of me doesn't like the idea that more power is going into Steam. Steam is soaking up even more power. You know, one of the nice things about all of these, all of these little launchers, as annoying as they were when you tried to organize your Steam, your, your gaming library, was that at least they were keeping the marketplace competitive. And yeah, there's the Epic Launcher and there's GOG and a number of other alternatives, but... As the smaller launchers start to disappear, Steam becomes more powerful and... That could potentially be a bad thing Thing when it comes to, um, you know, competition in a free market. Nick Butler says, Ox, more God of War, please. I would love to tackle more God of War on Friday. Uh, uh, on Fridays, that's going to be my plan for when I complete Sherlock Holmes is to start doing God of War. Uh, Toxic Sean, a member for 15 months and a silver ox, says, 15 months, my friend. I'm here to drink. I mean, aren't we all? This is a great time to drink. Cheers. Hmm. Good to have you on the program, Toxic Sean. No Name says, one of the cows didn't produce milk today. It was an utter failure. Ooh, just they're coming in strong today with the dad jokes. Thank you, chat. Jared Chover says, I got good news. Ukraine is holding the line. The real question is for how long. Yeah. I mean, I... Uh, I think Ukraine is going to make this much more painful for Russia than Russia was anticipating. I think Russia was 
I think Putin was really pissed off that Western intelligence got everything as right as it did. Like before he could come out with any false flag events, before he could say that Ukraine was performing genocide and there that justified an invasion and, and all of this, you know, we kind of, the Western intelligence spilled the beans and says, hey, this is what Putin is planning. So if he starts saying these things, well, we told you so. And that frustrated him so much. I, I get the impression that he just said, screw it, and decided to invade. I mean, it was just, you know, a few days ago where he was coming out saying, yeah, well, it was just military exercises on the border. We're packing up and leaving now. And he was releasing footage of tanks getting on trucks and being towed away. But then Western intelligence is like, oh, that's interesting because elsewhere we see more tanks mobilizing along the border. So why the mixed signals and, and all of that? Uh, anyway, I, uh, I, I, I know that the Ukrainians are, are incredibly resilient. The, the Ukrainian military, they're going to they're gonna go down to the last man and woman, I think. I mean, they're not going to let Putin have this easily. Can they prevent Putin from taking Kiev? I don't know. I hope so. My hope is with them. My faith is with them. And I'm rooting for Ukraine. Ian Chamberlain says, I've just started playing tonight and it's a fun game, but it's awesomely open and a fun challenge. Hope you enjoy it. Best of luck. Great. I do love a good challenge. I, I'm a little, you know, one of the things about Dark Souls that frustrated me as a brand new player is that I didn't know what to do. I had absolutely no idea. They just dump you in this world and you stumble into a Black Knight and then you die to another Black Knight and they're just awful and you don't know where you're supposed to go and... I, I, I ended up watching all of these these YouTube walkthroughs to get me through Dark Souls 1, and I started really enjoying it. Now, I don't have that for this game, for Elden Ring, so I'm kind of going into Elden Ring in the same way that I went into Dark Souls 1, which is not knowing anything and having no idea what to expect or where to go. I'm hoping that they'll give me sort of like a, a little carrot to follow. Just they'll, they'll push me in the right direction so that I kind of know what I'm doing at the beginning. I hope it's not sort of like plop me in the world. Here you go. Enjoy this massive open world. We're not going to hold your hand because this is a hardcore game. Figure it out. I hope that's not it because <laughs> I kind of want to be able to know where I'm going at the beginning of the game. We'll see. Wormy says, short joke since my last was long. Why are dwarfs so good at picking up girls? They're amazing at small talk. Oh, I haven't heard that one before. Pretty good. Thank you for that one, Wormy. Got my O oh, Wormy last time by tricking you. That was a good, that's a good O oh, Wormy one. Thank you for, <laughs> for that one, Wormy. Oh, man. The chat is flying by and I'm, I'm way behind. Uh, okay, let's see. Jason says, this is going to be so much fun to watch. Try not to die too much. I mean, that'll be the attempt, but we'll see. Scotian King says, love to stick around, but it's 1 a.m., so good night, Ox. No worries, Scotian King. The video on demand will be up after the broadcast. Julian Z says, Ox, despite the tragedy of what's going on, it does amaze me how we often read about historic events and imagine how things were, and now we find ourselves living through them. It's a little fascinating. It is very fascinating from an esoteric perspective, but I mean, we kind of did live through a once in a uh, multiple generation thing with a global pandemic. We had that, right? Then we had two huge recessions. I remember 2008 and 2000, 2008 and 9. I lost my job at the time because of that recession. Don't want to have to go through that again. And now we're going through the beginnings of World War III. How many once in a lifetime things do we have to go through in our lifetime? Fascinating, sure, but still, bummer. Big bummer. Alt Randall says, did you hear about the horse that doubted everything? He was a naysayer. Where's my rum? There it is. Oh, rum. Hmm. Ah. Thank you for that one, Alt Grendel. Louis Philippe says, evening to all the ox maniacs just saying hello. It's late and I'm exhausted, but wish you all a good game, great scotch, and the best cigars. Thank you, Louis Philippe. Good cigars and scotch to you too, my friend. Daniel Redondo says, Hey, Ox, been watching you for years, but I finally caught a, a live stream. Helped <clears throat> through a lot of times. You look amazing as always. Love you, man. Thank you, Daniel. You're so kind. Uh, glad you made it to a live broadcast, and I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of it today. Vince M says, Good evening, Ox. Starting school on Monday, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. Are you still looking for a custom-made alarm clock from Fallout? Um, 
Was I ever looking for that? I'll tell you what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you're right. I was looking for the... The, the, the alarm clocks in the Fallout universe, I still can't find them. I can't even find any 3D printed ones that look exactly like the clocks from, from the Fallout universe. The ones we see in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. Um, I know that it's inspired by a number of historical models of alarm clocks, and I've found some of those, but they're not exact. And for my display, I'm trying to get everything exact. So yeah, I have yet to find the right alarm clock. Or radio, by the way. I've been trying to find a good radio that looks like the one in the Fallout universe. Kid Flash 135 says, I get the game tomorrow. I can't wait to play. Good for you, my friend. I'm, I hope you enjoy it. I hope I enjoy it. I hope we all collectively enjoy it tonight. No Name says, I have my Steam Deck pre-ordered. That's awesome. I've got my Steam Deck right here, and I use it for all of my broadcasts. It's a handy little thing. Uh, Jared A. Shover says, I'm just stunned by how stupid our government is. Well, I'm sure there are many people who agree with that sentiment and many who disagree with that sentiment. But the important thing is that we're allowed to come onto the Internet and say that our government is stupid. The Russians don't have that freedom. The Chinese don't have that freedom. And that's a big green check mark in the column of why our government is awesome compared to the totalitarian ones of the world and why we should be rooting for Ukraine. Daniel Holmes says, uh, a member for 12 months says, did you hear that Obsidian is in early talks to do Fallout New Vegas 2? I did not hear that. I'm really curious if that's true or just a rumor. I mean, ever since uh, Microsoft acquired Obsidian and then acquired Bethesda, people have been talking about Obsidian doing a Fallout New Vegas 2. 2. That has been a fan rumor for some time, but I have not heard any official rumors or any official leaks to that nature. I'll do some research on my own after the broadcast, but I don't think I have heard anything about that just yet. The maker of Weird says, Wow, Ox is going to be playing Elden Ring. Have fun, Ox. <laughs> I can hear your pity in your voice. <laughs> Thank you. I'm hoping to have fun and not die a lot. We'll see. Toxic Sean says, Can you comment on the photo I just tweeted to you, please? I've got Twitter up on another monitor here. Hold on. All right, hold on. I got Twitter. Look at this Twitter thing. The monitor. I gotta refresh it. Just hold, let's look at the photo that you sent me. Oh wow, Toxic Sean, that is awesome. Is that your setup? Holy cow! Talk about a deconstructed computer. Wow, I am in. I am just totally impressed by that. Having built my own computer, seeing what you've put together there. And that it's working and that it looks so clean with so few wires. Nicely done, Toxic Sean. Man, you're making me want to get back and start uh, working on a new computer myself. Nice little setup, my friend. Looking good. Ranker1138 says, hello, I've been catching up on Sherlock streams. And you were wrong about the guy in the safe. The wife did it. She hired the thief because she couldn't open the safe. Oh, shoot. But she didn't have a motive. She was in love with him. I suppose she had an opportunity, but again, she didn't have a motive. Like, all of the correspondence we found, and when we talked with her, she was in love with him. Yes, she loved her husband, but to kill the man that she was having an affair with just because she felt it was her duty, uh, I don't think that that would have been a very good motive. See, the interesting thing about the latest Sherlock Holmes games is they're not giving us a definitive, yes, this is the correct option or this was the wrong one for many of the cases. And this is one of those cases. Was it the husband or was it the wife? Really, only the husband. It was, it, see, here's the thing. The husband is the one who changed the combination on the lock. The combination on the lock was the same for every single safe in the entire place. The default number, her birthday or something like that. But he only changes the combination for that one safe. Why? So that no one else would be able to open it if they heard banging on the inside because the default combination had been changed. Not even his wife would have known that. 
So I suppose you could say that she tried to get him into the safe because she wanted him to hide, planning to release him later because she knew the combination, but she didn't know it because her husband had changed it, and that's why he died. But that wouldn't have been murder. That would have been accidental death. So, I don't know. Julian Z says, Ox, what really, what is really scary of this is it may embolden China to make a move on Taiwan and then really start World War III. Let's hope it doesn't follow the fallout timeline. I, yeah, uh, this is a really important moment for the entire world because China is watching. And there's a very similar situation between China and t Taiwan as there is between Russia and the Ukraine. I mean, we already saw what, Ch what China did to Hong Kong a couple of years ago. And we were all really horrified by that. And we condemned it in the strongest of terms. Didn't do anything. Like, it didn't change anything. Hong Kong kind of got taken over. And it's no longer a democracy. It's not part of China. So, uh, that, I think, is one of those situations that could have emboldened Putin. And then Putin decides he's going to go do this. I mean, having so few consequences after Crimea. So many, few consequences after what happens to Hong Kong. I mean, now, of course, Putin's going to think, yeah, well, they're, they're all going to talk it. And sanctions. And NATO's going to talk about it. And the UN's going to... Blah, blah, blah. I'll still get away with it. I can still take the Ukraine. So the way the West responds to this, I think more than anything that's happened in the past is going to um, have the greatest implications about how far authoritarian powers are going to take things in the future, how far China is going to take the Taiwan issue in the future. So, yeah, I mean, I think we really need to respond harshly to this. Grievous Reborn says, I fear the Russians' uh, invasion of Ukraine will embolden the Chinese. Oh, and I just... Yeah, so this is a very similar thought to the one that Julian Z said just a moment ago. It'll embolden their Chinese allies to invade Taiwan. Yeah, many of us are thinking that exact same thing, my friend. The Mark says, an update for you on my kidney replacement. We'll be going on the list soon. Likely dialysis in the meantime. Thank you for being around to take my mind off things. Gonna okay this one soon myself. Mark in Gig Harbor. Thank you very much, Mark in Gig Harbor. I hope the waiting list is short for you and you get your kidney ASAP. Daniel Radley says, COVID-19, war, politics, God love humans. Luckily, we all have Ox. <laughs> for now, and I'm here for now. I mean, I am on the west coast of the nation, and Russia's a hop, skip, and a jump away. But whatever, I'm here for now, my friends. Jocelyn Ryan says, good night and good streaming. I'll enjoy scotch and smoke rings and all the tentacly goodness of the rum. This is crack and rum, after all. Cheers, Jocelyn. Jake Benz on Facebook says, what do you call a plane that can see? A seaplane. Ah, Jake, so great, that joke. Wonderful. Uh, Jackson on uh, YouTube says, have you been to Vashon Island? I have. It was a very long time ago. I haven't been recently. Do Rag with a super chat says Russia has had a track record of fumbling the ball when fighting small countries, Finland and Japan. So who knows? I mean, yeah, who knows? And when it comes to military things, they are not known for being terribly competent. There were more civilian casualties than even Russia intended during their take of the Crimean Peninsula due to the incompetence of their targeting, like the, the way that they targeted wartime targets. They in inadvertently attacked a lot of civilians. I mean, there, then there was that uh, that f Finnish airplane that they shot down on accident. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, it wasn't us, <laughs> even though the entire world proved that it was. So, yeah, I mean, when, when it comes to war, Russia isn't terribly competent, but they're big. They're just really, really, really big. And they have a lot of human assets to throw at the war. So in cases like that, you know, it doesn't matter if you miss your shot a thousand times if you have a million attempts, right? So. Oh, man, and man, they just keep on coming. All right, trying to catch up. It's going to be really hard for me to get to all of the Super Chats today, but I'm, I'm going to do my best. Uh, Julian C says, Ox, I know hindsight is twenty twenty, but I wonder if uh, what would have happened if the Ukraine hadn't been convinced to give up their nuclear weapons after the Cold War. I completely agree. I mean, that's that when I that's just completely pissing me off. 
Of course we did it because we wanted to pass we wanted to satiate Russia at the time and we were trying to stave off this very issue at the time by saying, okay, yeah, Russia, I guess we can understand why you would be uncomfortable with Ukraine having nukes as they're so close to you and they're very close allies to the West. So sure, we'll work with the Ukraine to get rid of their nukes with the understanding that we'll come to their defense in the event you invade. Then they invade. Like 20 years later, however long it's been, and and I don't know, it's they, they, we shouldn't have done that, of course, but you're right, hindsight is 2020. Jessica Sharp says, a careless pyromaniac made an ash of himself. As a careless py pyromaniac would. Ryan 2 Gamer, a member for five months and a silver ox, says, the new Poppy's Playtime Chapter 2 trailer just released, Poppy's Playtime, and it looks really good. Brand new characters hidden in the trailer. You should check it out. I can't wait. I'll check out the trailer after the broadcast, Ryan 2 Gamer. Thank you. Wormy says, uh, ooh, uh, double O Wormy tonight. I'm extra special. Oh, Wormy. There's a triple for you. Adrian Parker says, hey, Ox, hope your day has gone well. Crazy, crazy times right now with everything going on. Listening while at work. What are you smoking today? Today I am smoking a brick house, <clears throat> Churchill-sized brick house. As a backup, I, I ran out of my high-quality cigars. I've got a box coming, so I've got a quorum, which is like the lowest of the bottom shelf when it comes to hand-rolled cigars. But they were cheap, and I needed uh, to stock up. So this is my last really good quality cigar. I'm enjoying it on the broadcast, and that's my backup. Kid Flash 0135 says, we need a whiskey named after you, Oc an Oxhorn brand. An Oxhorn brand whiskey? I'm down for that. One of these days, <clears throat> Jake Benz says, also, as someone who has an extensive background with the knowledge of war and world powers, I believe you're right, Ox, how we respond to Russia is going to be the message sender to all other nations like Korea and China. Yeah. I agree. And uh, the way Iraq turned out didn't help things. So yeah, we really got to get this one right. <clears throat> Jared Chauvry says, the last Ukrainian kill count was 432. Russia's kill count is 133. Seems like Ukraine is doing well so far. I mean, yes, ag again... Population proportion size. The size of Ukraine is very, very small. So 133 soldiers out of an army of, you know, 2 million, let's say, is a greater number than 432 soldiers out of an army of 20 million or 30 million. I don't even know the, the military sizes they have. But uh, Putin has absolutely no problem with it's just throwing human flesh at a problem until the problem goes away. He doesn't care how many people he loses. He doesn't care about the soldiers that die. He's got plenty. He'll just throw them at the problem until the problem goes away. Ukraine doesn't have that. Ukraine has a very small army, very small military, a very small population. There's only so much that they can throw at this to defend themselves. Russia can afford to be sloppy. The Ukraine can't. So it's... I mean, that's great news, <sighs> On, on the cover, on, on the surface of it, it's good to hear something like that. I mean, it's still awful to hear something like that, that in just the span of 24 hours, we've got almost 600 people dead who were not dead beforehand. It's awful that that has happened thanks to Putin. And yet it's also, you know, good to hear that the Ukraine is making it difficult for Putin. But will it be enough? I don't know. Jake Ben says, instead, I will leave this topic with these incredibly spoken words. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Wise words for the ages. Daniel Randcliffe says, where does a spy go to the toilet? <clears throat> agents. 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 Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel Schuler says, good evening, Ox. What is your favorite kind of rum? My favorite is Kraken. I just typically like um, spiced, thick-tasting rums, really dark rums. Kunk, a member for 20 months and a silver ox, says, thanks for playing this, Ox. I'm hoping you'll have fun. Me too. Atomic Renegade says, I'm in Louisiana, and it's like 11.05 p.m., and I'm debating whether or not to stay up or go to bed for work tomorrow. That's a tough decision. Do what you need to 
for your career, my friend. And if that's going to sleep, you can always watch the video on demand later. The new guy, a member for 18 months and a silver ox, says, Hi all, can't believe I managed to wake early at 7 a.m. here to catch ox. Time for a new yay balls stream. Have fun and stay safe, everyone. Guys, just don't get me into these weird tentacle topics because bad things happen. And I'm just grateful that we're not diving down that road tonight. After all, Jocelyn Ryan went to bed early, so I think we should be spared from, from any naughtiness tonight. Canuck82 says, I heard that the rumor is someone at Microsoft essentially said Fallout New Vegas was popular. Maybe they should make another. Well, wouldn't that be nice if that were true? But hearsay is hearsay, and I won't believe it until I see something in black and white from a, a, a verifiable source. Miss Silver Fox 666, a member for 15 months and a silver ox, says, Hi Ox, so happy to make a stream after so long. My brother is so hyped for this game. I, did deci I decided to buy it for him. I can't wait to see you play. Well, I hope your brother loves the Dark Souls trilogy and is good at games like this. I'm, I may not be that good, but we'll have fun tonight. Ranker1138 says, That case did have a... A definite solution it was her uh, okay well we disagree if it was her if it was her then they needed to explain how she was able to set up this entire scheme without knowledge of the combination to the safe she planned to kill her lover in because her husband changed the combination how could this have worked if she did not know that combination and if that wasn't important to the case then why would they they have that in there well, like, what was the point of that? Only one safe in the entire safe store had its default combination changed. And it just so happened to be the one that they decide to murder a guy in. How is that not re relevant to the case? Anyway, I'll look, I'll look it up later. Chininator says, hey, Oxhorn and Oxaholics. Sorry I'm late. I don't think I'll be able to stay along. Been up uh, close to 24 hours because of work. No worries, Chininator. Get some sleep, my friend. Sleep is more important. Toxic Sean says, mouthful of Irish whiskey. Uh, den some Kraken and Coke. Kraken and Coke for the win, my friend. Cheers. <clears throat> um... Ranker says she accidentally killed him by hiding in the safe, but then it's not murder. Like if, so I can, I can understand the idea that she said, quick, my husband is coming, hide in the safe. And then the guy hides in the safe and she closes the door. But then she's not guilty of killing him because she planned to release him knowing the combination, thinking that she knew the combination. But her husband, knowing that the lover was in the room and wanting to kill him, change the combination, knowing that the lover would go into the safe when he surprised them by arriving early when he shouldn't have been there. He's the one who changed the combination. He knew that the lover would be in the room. He knew that the lover would hide in the safe. He is the one guilty of murder, not her, even if she encouraged him to hide in the safe. Was the affair wrong? Yeah, yeah, but having an affair is not murder. So I still think he's at fault for this. Deuteronomus with a gold derby, a member for 38 months and a silver ox, says, does all this stuff kind of make you yearn for the good old days when the most controversial thing we discussed was the Atom Shop and Dolphin Power Armor and all of that? Yeah, can't we just go back to, like, talking about dolphin-themed power armor and whether or not the creative club was worth it? Like, those are the conversations I miss. Not World War Three and Pandemics. Jeez. The Fallout Collector says, would you do a review of my Fallout collection? I have a video on Twitter. I'll tag you. Oh, the, well, I would love to see it. I can't promise I'll do a review on it, but go ahead and tag me on Twitter and I'll take a look at it and uh, give you my thoughts. Kestriv uh, says, never was a lore person, but for some reason I could just listen to your videos on all of the Fallouts. Well, thank you, Kestriv, very much. <clears throat> I uh, really enjoy what I do, and I love all of the Fallout stories, and I'm glad that I can introduce them to a larger audience. Michael Ansley became a gold ox. Thank you, Michael Ansley. And Kristen Engelhart says, Happy news. My class, the Greenville Rockin' Bears, will play at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They are 15 to 18-year-olds. That's awesome. Well, good luck to the Greenville Rockin' Bears and their performance at the Rock, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I hope they all do well, and they remember it forever. John Goose says, what is it about cigars that you like? 
I can smoke, so I, or I can't smoke, so I can't try it myself, if this makes any sense. It does make sense. And I have to say that I'm probably an atypical cigar smoker because I can't taste very well. I don't have a very sensitive um, sense of taste. Many people smoke cigars because they enjoy the flavor. They love the nuances of how each cigar tastes different and how you can craft a taste, uh, a cigar to taste nutty or fruity or earthy or like licorice or whatever, just based on how you age the tobacco. That's what many cigar smokers get into it. But I can't take, taste any of that. Like, I can't pick any of that up. For me, every cigar <clears throat> essentially tastes the same. What I like in a cigar is the feeling of it, the way that the fire draws through it the draw of a cigar how smooth it is how smooth it burns um, sometimes it'll give you a little bit of a head rush or a little bit of a feeling <clears throat> and uh, those are really nice I, I I like cigars for that reason but really I, I like to smoke cigars just because it's something to occupy my myself with while I'm working or while I'm doing something else and you know it's I don't know I kind of feel like I gotta have something to occupy myself with Sarah says, I want to live in a world without nukes. So terrifying. How can we stand up against tyranny with that kind a type of destruction? Waiting there. Damn you, Einstein. Well, I mean, Oppenheimer, but okay. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, yeah, nukes, nukes are bad, but they exist and they'll never go away. So I'm glad America has nukes and we should have a lot like the West. NATO, we should all have lots of nukes, just tons of them. I don't like nukes, but I think we should have a ton of them. Michael Yang says, is Elden Ring the next game for Scotch and Smoke Rings, or is this just a launch day stream? It's just a launch day stream. I may play more of it, depending on how well I like it. I don't know how well I will, though, and I can't predict that. So I'm curious about the game, and I know that many of you are curious about it. So I wanted to play it today for Scotch and Smoke Rings, but uh, I'll pick it up if I end up really enjoying it. Julian Z says, Ox, I was also thinking if the rest of the world views the West as weak and not reliable for aid and defense from aggressive world powers, nations may see building a nuclear arsenal as their only hope. I agree. It's one of those weird things, though, right? Like when America goes in guns blazing, we get accused of policing the world. And it's not our right to go into Iraq and to go into Iran. And what, what is businesses of, it, of, of ours? And the, these small little nation states should just do their own thing and yada, yada, yada. And then that's all our fault. We shouldn't do that. We should stick with our democracies and then just stick to our own business. But then when we don't do things like that and when, when we don't defend people who are needing it, then... It's, well, the West is weak. Look at the West. They're not doing anything. They could intervene. They could do something, but they're not doing that right now. They must be really weak. This is the end of democracy. It's the end of Western civilization. Yada, yada, yada. It's like, well, pick one. Which of, which of these do you want? Do you want us to be the world police? Have U.S. and NATO go around fixing all the world's problems? Does America even want that? Do we really want to burden ourselves with that? Is that really our job as a nation and an alliance? Or do we mind our own business and kind of let tyrants do tyrannical things to their neighbors and maybe it looks as, makes us look weak, weak, but hey, at least we're not spending a ton of money on it. I mean, which one is right? Lots of opinions. Uh, Toxic Sean says, just realized this is a Dark Souls game. I mean, it, it kind of is. It's by the makers of Dark Souls. It's not part of the Dark Souls trilogy, but it's, it is very similar to the Dark Souls franchise. Joshua Kane says, uh, so I hope it never happens, but imagine a Fallout game about what's going on one day. I mean, yeah, I hope it never happens too. And I'm glad that all of our post-apocalyptic um, curiosities are being satiated in a fictional universe, not in a real one. Jessica James became a bronze ox. Thank you, Jessica James. Brandon Belfed says the best com uh, compliment I can give my favorite streamer when he lifts weights is to tell him he is strong as an ox. Thank you, Brandon Beltfed. I'll remember those kind words the next time I'm getting swole. Shadow787 says, to quote Carl Sagan, think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph, they could become the mom uh, momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Yes, well, when you do think of galactic or universal scale, um, our petty problems look so minuscule. Parker Smith says, gonna do a, the New Horizon game when it comes to the PC? Yes. 
Jake Benz on Facebook with a donation of stars says, On the lighter side of war, my wife is invading my guilt for eating the last of our dinner that I didn't know she wanted. Okay. In interesting way to go about saying that, but I, I get what you're saying. Uh, hopefully you can make it up for her tonight, maybe by making some brownies or something. Or back rubs. I hear back rubs work. Jake Ben says, also, I finally made it halfway through Steel Dawn and the Brotherhood questline in 76. Oh, good. I'm glad you're getting through there. That is the lore series I'm working on right now, and I am uh, working my way through Steel Dawn. Only a couple of episodes left in Steel Dawn. Then we move on to Steel Rain. Jared says, why would anyone want to invade Ukraine? Well, I mean, there are a lot of geopolitical reasons why Russia wants to invade the Ukraine. He's trying to say things like, oh, you know, Ukraine, it, it shouldn't really be... D divorced from Russia anyway. It was always part of Russia. We speak nearly the same languages and we, we have nearly the same culture. The fact that they're an independent nation is just an accident due to the fall of communism. Somebody drew it up wrong on the map and they should really be part of our nation. And so we're just bringing our brothers and sisters home, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's what he tries to spin it. It's not true. The Ukraine has always had its own independent identity. They're, they've, 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 they've always, uh, seen themselves as apart from Russia. So that what he invented there, it's not true. What is much more uh, true is when he says that um, having a pro-West democracy so close to his border makes him nervous. That's, yeah, I can buy that. And I, I, I can see why he would be nervous that a pro-Western democracy is right next to him. And they're doing okay. You know, I wouldn't call it, they've got some companies out of there. There are many of, of the games that we've played have come out of the Ukraine, lots of industry in the Ukraine. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're doing pretty good. So they're, a, they're a lucrative target for that reason. Uh, and uh, it, there's a national security reason as well for trying to take the Ukraine. Kellen Gray says, is now a good time to change topic to body pillows? No, no, no. There's never a good time to change topics to body pillows. Even in the middle of World War III, we can still do without talking about body pillows, in my opinion. Danger Jim says, uh, hey, Ox, thanks for keeping this community going through all these interesting times. I'm doing my best, my friend. I'll be here for, for as long as I can draw breath. Toxic Sean says, I request a smoke ship for my boss. And uh, Andres, Andres pronounced Andres. Ha ha, please, sir. All right. A smoke ship for undress. Here we go. This today's smoke ship is going to be a giant battleship embodying embodying the the tenacity and the freedom of the Ukrainian people destroying the interloper, Russia. Wow! There you go. That one was for uh, Toxic Sean's friend, Andres. I hope you didn't blink, because if you did, you missed it. But for the briefest mo of moments before your very eyes was a ship painted in nothing but uh, smoke. And it had the blue and yellow colors of Ukraine. And it was a beautiful battleship uh, reigning victorious on the seas. No Name says, watch it burn and I'll bring the marshmallows. There's your grim take for the evening. Thank you, No Name. That's productive and helpful. The Raging Krogan says, Hey, Ox, supposed to be sleeping to get up for work tomorrow. In bed and can't sleep. I'm too aggravated about Russia invading Ukraine. Yeah, that's the way I was last night as well. I, I, I was in the middle of shooting footage for my Steel Dawn series. And, you know, I got, you know, two hours into shoot, to recording audio. And then I sat down to try to shoot some more footage. And I was like, I can't do this right now. I can't. So I just watched live streams of downtown Kiev and, you know, read articles and, it's one of those things, one of those moments in time where sometimes it's okay to step back and just soak up the situation and contemplate it and think, how did we get to this point? What could, have we, what could we have done differently? And how do we get out of it? Freddie Simmons says, how did he know that the homewrecker wouldn't? A, go out the back door. B, hide under the bed. 
See, suck it up and face the music. That's why I said during the broadcast that it seems flimsy. The problem with sucking it up and facing the music is that he was a historical enemy of the uh, of the husband. Like their families had gone back generations and they were enemies. And it was very likely that he was afraid of the man. He was afraid of what violence might happen. Uh, so I suppose he could have hid under the bed, but you know, maybe it was a really short bed and he had to squeeze under there. Or what if the husband sits on the bed while he is you know, hiding under there. And, and remember, he was coming up through the back door. So he couldn't have gone out the back door. It was the husband who was coming up from the back door. That was part of the entire lore that we read. So not only was he arriving early at a time when he wasn't supposed to be there, but he was coming through the back door, an entrance he never uses, right? And there was really only one clear avenue of escape, hide in the safe. It might seem flimsy, but the, all of the evidence points to the fact that the husband purposefully killed his wife's lover. Uh, K. But Rar says, my brother-in-law is Marine. And today when we spoke, he told us all his favorite quote, war does not determine who is right, only who is left. That's true. War definitely isn't always a good way to determine who's right and wrong. Dylan5 says, I'm giving back for all the times I fell asleep to Fallout vids, but I pooped my pants at work today, so not, not a good day. Hmm. Oh. Well, Dylan, I'm glad you chose to share that with the entire Oxhorn community. I'm sure we were all curious. Did Dylan poop his pants at work today? And you've clar clarified that for us. We now know it was a yes. Interesting. I wonder what the circumstances at work were that led to this. Now, if it was something like, I drank too much coffee, I'll be disappointed. So I'm hoping for a story later on, Dylan. Thank you for the contribution. Defected Levy says, hey, Ox, glad to make it. Hope all is well. This will give me a good idea on how badly I'm doing. I'm going to want to play this. Yeah, uh, you're probably going to see me die a lot. So don't judge the game based on my poor uh, performance playing it. Thomas McCormick says, from what I have heard, uh, Elden Ring is a more approachable open world take on the Dark Souls slash Bloodborne games. Very excited to see you experience the world. I'm excited too. Sarah says, now just to say, love you, Ox and friends. Cheers. Thank you, Sarah. Always glad to have you on the program. Tommy with a sticker tip. Thank you very much, Tommy. And then Kunk says, what do you think about the vaults of Fallout being experiments for habitats on other planets and that Starfield will live in the same universe as Fallout? Uh, number one, I don't think Starfield will live in the same universe as Fallout. I know fans have been trying to connect the Skyrim and, or the, the Elder Scrolls and the Fallout and, and likely the Starfield universes for years. There's just no evidence for it. I mean, the Elder Scrolls world has multiple moons it's it, they're different universes completely different universes um at but as for the vaults being experiments for habitats on other planets that's what uh, vault tech beyond the stars would have us believe um after going through the the exhibit at nuka world perhaps they did have some outposts on other worlds or some uh, vaults that were designed to mimic um, environments of other worlds. But if that's the case, we haven't found any of them yet. Kenneck82 says, My friends, love is better than anger. Hope is better than fear. Optimism is better than despair. So let us be loving, hopeful, and optimistic, and we'll change the world. Jack Layton, Canada politician. That's a great quote. Thank you so much for sharing that. Gene Langdon says, Was playing Fallout 76, just noticed the price of magazines and regular gas. Yikes! Life getting close to imitating art. Love your streams. Keep them coming. By the way, Forbidden West? Absolutely, when it comes to the PC. And yeah, the inflation in the Fallout universe was just ridiculous. Crazy. 70 bucks for a, a magazine? Stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, but hopefully it won't get that bad despite inflation increasing in our universe. The Raging Krogan says they call it breaking away from Soviet Union. I will show to all of you what breaking away from the Soviet Union means. Putin said this recently. He did. He's also said a lot of things. He's also the guy that stripped off his shirt and rode a horse around a couple of years ago because he wanted to seem manly. So he's just a sociopath. Can we just say that? He's did, Will he back, back it up with nukes? I mean, maybe. He has them. So maybe, <laughs> God, ah, that's the scary part. He is a sociopath and he does have nukes. NCR Trooper with uh, a donation. Thank you very much, NCR Trooper. 
Jake Ben says, I actually got to talk uh, about something like it. I call the fallout theory and I'm writing a book on it too. Cool, Jake Benz. Well, I look forward to uh, to hearing more about your book in the future. Jessica Sharp says, This whole situation reminded me of a quote from Winston Churchill. Russia is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside uh, an enigma. That sounds like something Churchill would say. Jake Benz says, Tomorrow I'll be at my old college talking about the fallout theory in the real world. Good luck, Jake. Let me know how the talk goes. Jason Cuesta on Facebook with a donation of stars. Thank you, Jason Cuesta. And Jessica Sharp on Facebook with a donation of stars says, This situation also reminded me of another Winston Churchill quote too. The whole history of the world is summed up in the fact that when nations are strong, they are not always just, and when they wish to be just, they are often no longer strong. That is a harrowing quote, uh, and I hope it doesn't apply to this particular situation. Austin Overegg, with a donation of stars on Facebook, says, uh, My Call of Duty Discord had a few friends living in Kiev saying they were going to a police station to get a gun and go to the front line. I hope that they're okay. Yeah, I, I've heard anecdotally from a number of my, uh, friends on social media as well that they were doing the same thing. I have a few acquaintances uh, that I know from my time in the gaming industry who uh, live and work out of the Ukraine. And uh, they have said similar things where they're sort of, everyone's rallying around. Like if they're healthy enough and if they can get their hands on a weapon, they're, they're tackling this situation. The only way they know how, the only way they can. Luke Hallmander says, hey, Ox, how's your family doing? All this and, of course, your dog, Admiral. The family is doing fine. The kids are fast asleep. By the way, my son uh, lost a tooth tonight, and the tooth fairy is supposed to visit him. I need you guys to remind me before the broadcast ends that the tooth fairy is supposed to visit my son so that the tooth fairy doesn't forget. The tooth fairy might get distracted between now and then. Let's uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Fat Albert says, hey, 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 na, na, na. Going to have a good time watching Oxhorn stream. Thank you, Fat Albert. Love it. And then No Name says, if it eases the thought, there has been more peaceful use of nuclear energy than combat use in our history. Nuclear power, nuclear ships and subs, etc. Now, that's true. Nuclear technology has been used as a force of energy and progress uh, more than it has been used as a force for destruction. That still doesn't make it any less scary. It's pretty destructive nuclear technology. Cloakstorm Soldier says, Hey Ox, been a huge fan for about three years and re-watching Fallout New Vegas lore right now. Another YouTuber, uh, Sh uh, Shizo Elijah, made a sort of targeted diss video on you. I'm confused. Comfortable sharing story? I don't really know. Like, I don't know who Sh Shizo Elijah is. This is the first time I've heard of him. There was another guy years ago who called himself Elijah who was doing videos about me. But this is the first time I've heard of this guy. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, you, the way it goes when you become on, when you become noticed on YouTube <clears throat> is you just begin to make enemies. Just you do. You just, there's no getting around it. Whether they dislike your opinions, whether they dislike your take on a video game, they just don't like the sound of your voice. There's, there are lots of people who just don't like you, and that's that's actually okay. You know, it's it's impossible to be liked by everybody. And there are probably plenty of things about me that some people just don't like. And that's okay. You know, that's just part of the of the gig. Freddie Simmons says, uh, why do you switch back and forth between the Ukraine and Ukraine? Isn't it just Ukraine? No, the. Sorry if that's something that I'm doing. You're right. It is just Ukraine, not the Ukraine. I'm not sure why I'm doing that. Might be a subconscious thing. I don't know. Jake Ben says, uh, what do you call a rabbit in a hard situation? A hairy situation. Because it's got hair, lol. Get, I get it, Jake. Rabbit in a bet. That's a hairy situation. There you go. Toxic Sean says, cheers to the Ox community, the Oxhorn community for your information. <laughs> Thank you very much, Toxic Sean. I appreciate it. And look at that. I finally get to the end of the Super Chats. How long have we been going now? 54 minutes of nonstop talk. Look how much cigar I've gotten through after nearly an hour. 
Hardly any. That's how much talking I'm doing. I love it. You guys are the best. I love this community. We're going to be getting into the game in just a few minutes. If you're ready for Elden Ring, it's time to pop that popcorn, to pour that scotch, to light up that cigar, because you're about to watch me die a lot. Just a lot. It's, it's going to happen. Jared on uh, Facebook says, I'm sure Ukraine regrets giving up its nuclear missiles. I'm sure they do. I, I mean, I'm sure... I'm sure the entire West does. I'm sure NATO does. I'm, America does. I regret that. I think that was probably a bad thing to have done. Alt Grendel says, Hey, Ox, ever think that when you die in a game, you aren't respawning? You're actually changing timelines to a universe where the character succeeds, a.k.a. Rick and Morty. Oh, well, I'm not familiar enough with Rick and Morty to get that reference, though I do understand the concept you're describing. And uh, I suppose that's uh, something... Yeah, if we wanted to, if we if we needed to maintain continuity when gaming, though I don't even know if that's necessary. Luke Hollander says, "Hey Ox, where did you get your cigar lighter? I got it in Amsterdam, actually, and I have struggled with lighters my entire time smoking cigars. I uh, I I can never get them to keep things on fire. But I went to Amsterdam for work years ago." And I walked into a cigar shop, and he had this guy. It's a desktop lighter. You don't, you're not supposed to hold it when you light the cigar, but I do. And it has kept a, a solid flame for me all these years. This was almost 10 years ago now. And uh, it's great. I love it. All right, folks. Four minutes. Well, three and a half minutes, and then we start Elden Ring. <laughs> Stanley Bob says, if Ukraine and Russia were fallout factions, who would you side with? I mean, the Ukraine. Or I say, why do I say the Ukraine? I don't even know why I'm saying the Ukraine. Did it used to be known as the Ukraine? Like in Soviet times? Is that why I'm saying it? Why am I saying it? It's Ukraine. I know for the longest time, I kept calling it Czechoslovakia. When it's the Czech Republic. And it's been the Czech Republic for a very long time. But for some reason, I still find myself saying Czechoslovakia. And that's gone. Like, Czechoslovakia is gone. No Name says, I was riding a donkey the other day when someone threw a rock at me and I fell off. I guess I was stoned off my ass. Also, would you like to try assisted mode? That's probably going to be a phrase we'll hear a lot during today's broadcast. Ranker says, I'm sorry to say there are reports of troops and equipment massing near the Polish and Latvian borders, which are NATO states. May they just be reports, as the alternative is undoubtedly World War III. And that's true. It's something that, um, <clears throat> that NATO made clear this morning. I mean, the only reason NATO and America and the West isn't getting involved in the Ukraine right now, in Ukraine right now, is because Ukraine is not a member of NATO. But... When you become a member of NATO, it's all for one and one for all. If any member of NATO gets attacked, all of NATO, every nation that's part of NATO jumps to the defense of that nation. Lithuania is part of NATO. Poland is part of NATO. So yeah, if that happens, World War III. Jay Leeds says... Uh, uh, all the mines, mines, mines. Uh, P.S. Much love to you. The streams and vids. Thank you, Jay Leeds. Mines, mines, mines. Toxic Sean says, Andreas, not undress. I effed up. Andreas, not undress? I must have missed something. Andreas, not undress? Guess I don't understand the reference. All right, it's time. Let's get the game going. David Gray says, 10 bucks says you'll spend an hour creating your character. <laughs> 
I'm going to resist that, right? I, I, I promise not to spend an hour creating my character. Maybe 10 minutes, right? Can we, go, can we try to aim for 10 minutes on character creation? Dylan Grant with a tip. Thank you very much, Dylan Grant. Ranker1138 says, the Ukraine was the Soviet term for the country. Was it? Why am I using it? Oh my God. Maybe, maybe, maybe I got it from like too many Bond films or something. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. Launch. Let's try this. All right, sorry, it's loading up the the anti-cheat software. That's why it's taken so long. Julian Z says, Ox, I was hoping for four hours of character creation. Well, can't please everybody. Survivor from the old era says, for Drac me, or whatever the in-game currency is. Uh, well, in Dark Souls, it was souls. I'm not sure what it is in this game. We'll find out. It's still loading. For those of you who want to know what my system specs are when running this game, I've got a PC part picker list in the description of this video. That is some intense music there. Online multiplayer. No game. The maker of weird says, when will you give us uh, a tour of your office, Ox. It's something I have been meaning to do for quite some time. I just haven't gotten around to, to it. One of these days, I will. Julian Z says, come on, Ox, just one tiny hour of character creation. Look, here we are. We'll see how long it takes me to create my character. Fat Albert says, uh, please play offline mode. Can't see you surviving an invasion from another player. Can I go off into offline mode every time? At, at any time? No one will be able to find me, right? All right, so we've got the Vagabond. Uh, what is a Vagabond? Is there like... Okay. Show status. Vagabond is level 9. Vigor and Endurance. Higher Vigor... Okay, so they've changed that. Vigor's gonna be health... Mind is mana, endurance, stamina, and then the rest are all just like um, weapon specific stats. Vigor and endurance. I want to start with higher vigor and endurance is what I want. All right, and then there's the hero. So vagabond, warrior, hero, bandit. Level five? The bandit starts at level five? Why would they do that? 14 arcane. The astrologer, level six, nine vigor. The prophet, oh, that is so cool. Uh, I love the character, uh, the looks of all of these starting characters. Level seven, vigor of 10, endurance of eight. Samurai, level nine, vigor of 12, endurance of 13. A prisoner. Whoa. I'm getting Count of Monte Cristo. No, man in the iron mask. 
Man in the Iron Mask vibes here. That's cool. Vigor 11, uh, Endurance 11. <laughs> that mask is so sweet. Uh, Confessor, High Faith, yeah. And then the Wretch, level one. This is gonna be hardcore mode. You wanna start the game in hardcore mode, play a Wretch. 10 in all stats, but you're level one. <laughs> I mean, there's probably gotta be some benefit for doing that, right? All right, I really want to be one of these three. Vagabond, Warrior, or Hero. What's the difference between these three? The base stats, yeah. I'm not really concerned about with, with strength. I'll add more points into strength as I find weapons that require it. So Hero's got better endurance by one point. But the Vagabond has better, better vigor by one point. Compared between the two. And he starts with either with a sword, with a halberd and with a shield and whatever that is I don't even know what is that two scimitars and a shield and an axe and a shield I think I want to go vagabond Jared on uh, Facebook says 20 bucks two hours of character creation lol I'm almost done I think I've picked what I wanted so the choices for those joining vagabond warrior hero Bandit, Astrologer, Prophet, Samurai, Prisoner, Confessor, or Wretch. I think I want Vagabond. Starts at a higher level. Starts with the highest vigor. And still pretty good endurance. Body type? What's the difference in body type? Type A? Okay. Name, Oxor. Body type. What is body type? Buff body, a body type. Body type has no bearing on ability. Oh. So if I want to be buff or slender. Age. Age only affects appearance, has no bearing on ability. Young, mature, aged. Let's go mature. Origin. Oh, I see. So here we can pick a class again. All right. So here we can actually learn what these guys are. A vagabond is a knight exiled from their homeland to wander. A solid armor clad origin. A warrior is a nomad warrior who fights wielding two blades at once. An origin of exceptional technique. A hero is a stalwart hero at home with a battle axe descended from a badlands chieftain. A bandit is a dangerous bandit who strikes for weak points, excels at ranged combat with bows. An astrologer is a scholar who reads fate in the stars, heir to the school of glintstone sorcery. A prophet is a seer ostracized for inauspicious prof prophecies, well-versed in healing incantations. A samurai, a capable fighter from the distant land of reeds, handy with katana and longbows. A prisoner is bound in an iron mask, studied in glintstone sorcery, having lived among the elite prior to sentencing. Man, this is the guy I'm really curious about. Maybe for a second playthrough. Confessor, a church spy adept at covert operations, equally adept with a sword, as they are with their incantations, and the wretch, a poor, purposeless sod, naked as the day they were born. A nice club is all they have. <laughs> Man, that is one nice club. All right, we'll go Vagabond. Keepsake. No keepsake. The past has been well and truly left behind. So we can choose the Crimson Amber Medallion. A medallion inlaid with Crimson Amber increases maximum HP. Thank you. Lands between Rune. The Gold of Grace shining in the eyes of the people of the lands between. Used to gain many runes. Oh, so I can level up faster. Oh, runes must be the souls of this universe. Okay, so it's like a, a lesser soul of a proud knight or something like that. Golden seed. A golden seed washed ashore from the lands between, said to reinforce sacred flasks. Ooh, flasks. I can reinforce my flask? Oh yeah, that's what I want. A fanged imp ashes. The ashes of a small diminutive golem, 
Ashes are said to hold spirits within. Curious. I wish I knew the consequences of this choice. A cracked pot. <laughs> Three strange cracked pots that somehow mend themselves. A container for certain thrown items. The stone sword key. Two stone keys shaped like swords. Breaks the seal on imp statues, but can only be used once. A bewitching branch. Five sacred branches charged with beguiling power, said to originate from the demigod Mikella. Boiled prawn? Five pieces of boiled prawn. Boosts physical damage negation. And Shabriri's Woe. The crazed likeness of a noble whose eyes have been gouged out attracts enemies' aggression. Hmm. Well, I, I was going to get the Crimson Amber Medallion, but I think I really want this Golden Seed. It reinforces... If that's anything like an Estus Flask, then I'm going to need as many charges as I can get. We'll do a Golden Seed. Choose a base template. Oh. What is this? The most common face among the tarnished. After all, they were all warriors once. Oh, okay, so these are looks. All right. A face of an austere, austere pilgrim. There are many roads to truth. A regal face found among those who claim noble blood in the lands between. The loner, face found among a proud and seclusive tribe of folk, well-versed in ancient legends and heresies alike. A northerner, man, that guy is pale. <laughs> a face found among the hardy people of the unforgiving north. Some say they are descended from giants. The seafarer, the face of one who wanders the lands in search of their home and the lands between. A reed handler, a face from the faraway isolated land of reeds, where blood is a familiar sight. The Draconian, the stony face of the people of the ancient dragons, among whom life is typically short. The Night Folk, the features of those known as the Night Folk. Few in number, they were said to bleed silver long ago. And Newman, the face of the Newman, supposed descendants of den denizens of another world, long lived but seldom born. I like the Newman. In the seafarer. Gotta go, Newman. Detailed appearance. change skin color. I actually kind of like that one. Oh, wow. We can have ve very distinct skin colors here. Okay. Well, I like the one I've got. Alter face and hair. But maybe I am going to spend an hour at this, guys. I don't know. Let's <laughs> Someone's going to have to go and put a timestamp into the comments later. Oxhorn finishes his character here. Okay, bone structure. Form emphasis. Ooh.
apparent age. How does this change? I'm not seeing a big change here. Facial aesthetic, masculine. <laughs> That's feminine? Wow. I mean, that's more reptilian than anything. I feel like I've got toad eyes there. Uh, okay, we'll just stay masculine. Okay, that was uh, face structure. Hair. Alt Grendel says you got to give him a full beard at the very least. Oh, you know I will. One of these is going to be Jonathan Taylor Thomas hair. Wow. Lots of options for hair. Um, oh, look at that dandy cut. That's pretty great. Oh man, I have to use this. I can't drag it. Hmm. Oh, we've got a Princess Leia. Look at that. Okay, uh, let's see. I want... I'll take that. Four. Hair color. Oh, let's do a darker brown. My, my hair is darker brown than that, right? It's like, that's a bit too dark. It's a bit too red. Yeah, like, like that. Is that my hair color? Luster. Strong luster. Gentle luster. Root darkness? What is root darkness? Huh. I mean, I am seeing a change there. Let's go in the middle there. White hairs. I've got a few white hairs here. Ooh. Abundant. Let's do there. Uh, Click and Orca says, it's like you're designing the dude from The Witcher. Geralt? He doesn't quite look like Geralt, I gotta say. Alright, eyebrows. Wow, we can do all sorts of stuff here with eyebrows. Oh, it's gotta have bushy eyebrows. Yeah, give me a number four. Whoa, those are evil eyebrows. Oh, that's a unibrow. All right, I like 14 and I like four. Let's do four. Brow color, match hair, luster, match hair, root darkness, match hair, white hairs, match hair. Facial hairs. Oh yeah, give me that beard. I want a full on beard. Yeah. Oh, I know. There, we got some caveman beard going on there. We got three beard styles. We've got caveman, this is like a thin, scraggly kind of beard. That's a bit more full, but no mustache. That's an Amish beard. We're going Survivor Man. Now, as any bearded man in his 30s and 40s knows, your beard goes gray before the rest of your body. So we're gonna go white hairs. No, they don't match the rest of your hair. They are abundant. <laughs> we got an abundantly white beard. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. There's my self-portrait. <laughs> Eyelash? We could do eyelashes? What? Are we ever... Is there ever going to be a point in the game where we're going to get a close-up of our eyelashes? Well, all humans have eyelashes, right? So we got to have those. Man, those are some... 
lavish eyelashes. Um, it's hard to see in the close-up, so I'm just gonna go number two. Eyes. Oh. Right, I, we have to do each one independently? Oh no, so we've got the left one that matches the right. But we could do them independently if we wanted to. Right iris size. Mm. Beady, beady little eyes. Oh, I like the large, we'll keep that. Right iris color. So I've kind of got greenish blue eyes, or no, more blue. Well, that's too sea green. Right eye clouding. Clear or opaque, let's go clear. Right eye white color, that's very white. Right eye position. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ox horn the cross-eyed. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> that's great. That's some detail right there. I guess let's leave that different. I could have a wonky eye because I can do each eye independently. That's pretty cool. Skin features, pores. I can't, I can't see the difference here. Closed pores or open pores. What is that? Let's as high as we can zoom in. I guess closed pores? Skin luster, plain or lustrous. I mean, I don't want to look oily. And then I also don't want to look like I've got scaly skin either, so. Dark circles. Wow. Cosmetics. We can do eyeliner. Yeah. I think I'll skip that. Eyeshadow. Rudy Cheeks. Lipstick. Subtle or vibrant. Why has this guy got subtle lipstick on? Oh, because it pales the lips out. I see. Toxic Sean says, who called Ox's character creation at one hour? You get a bonus. What? It's been, it's been 11 minutes. All right, I might be over 10 minutes, but it's not been an hour. Toxic Sean says, I love it. It's been 11 minutes. Okay. Tattoo mark eye patch. Whoa, big old scar. Oh, nasty. None. 
Select a face similar to the present face. Oh no, is this gonna... What happens if I click this? Am I gonna undo all that I did? Oh, I see. It auto-generates different faces based on everything that I put in. Oh, cool. So I've got a pretty round face. Let's see if I can find a rounder face in here. That's a bit rounder. There, I think that's it. I like it. Okay, let's alter body. Head. Oh dear. Okay, let's do... Chest. First. Oh, I see. So you can't put fat on there. What? There we go. Large abdomen. Oh, yeah. Beefy arms. I never skip thigh day. Leg day? No. I'm all about that. We got abundant hair here. Oh, yeah. You probably didn't want to know that, but... Yeah, abundant hair. The chest is looking a bit small now. Yeah, let's beef up that chest there. All right, now let's see. Head. Whoa, that's a big head. Body hair color. We need like a dark brown. Musculature. Standard. Muscular. Well, I mean, this is a fantasy. I'm not this ripped. But I'm also not this ripped either. <laughs> we'll go standard for now. Toxic Sean says, ran out of Kraken. Never mind. Tillamore do. Got to get yourself some. That's Irish whiskey, right? Good stuff. All right. I think we're good. Save to favorites. Yeah. I wish I could make him fatter, but I can't. All right. Start the game with this character. So it's a literal ring? In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. Is that Sean Penn? And in the night of the Black Knives, oh, Sh Sean Bean. Godwin the Golden was first to perish. It's not. It's not. Thought it was Sean Bean for a minute there. It's not. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. If we could harness this power, the man use it. taint of their newfound strength to save Gondor triggered the shattering. Oh, oh, that's gross. A war from which no lord arose. A war. Leading to abandonment 
by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. What? We're undead again? Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Ophnir, the all knowing. So there are those like demigods we have to hunt down. And one other whom grace would again bless. A tarnished of no renown. Me, hiya. Across the fog, to the lands between. I'm special too. To stand before the Elden Ring. I'm no deathbed companion, but I'll do and my best. And become the Elden Lord. Okay, here we are. Toxic Sean says, I often think of your Resident Evil streams. Good stuff, Ox. Thanks, Toxic. Had a blast with that series. Tiffany Selling says, I just got home with my copy. Loading it now. Can't wait to play. Love you, Ox. Thanks, Tiffany. Hope you have a blast. All right, there's my guy, and I got my shield. All right, let's see. Uh, yes. Is, is Perry the same? It is. It's the exact same key binding. Jump back. Rolling dodge. Ooh, that's a jump. Strong attack. Nice. Um, that's parry. Strong attack. Regular attack. And then block. Okay, uh, so we appear in this crypt thing. Ooh, what's that? Read message. Elden Ring, oh, Elden Ring. Oh, hidden path ahead. What? Hidden path ahead? So <clears throat> for those new to, to Souls-like games, these are written by actual players, other players, who give tips. Seek Elden Ring and then hope, oh hope. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes the tips aren't very good. They're just not useful. Though the path be broken and uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. Yes, we did all see that cinematic. Thank you for that. All right, pillage corpse. Tarnished wizened finger. Okay. Inventory menu. With the inventory menu, you can browse the items you're carrying, drop them on the ground, or throw them away. You can also use tools from the inventory menu. R to show large image and explanation. F to toggle character data. Item for online play. Use to write messages. Ah. Equip arms, bolts. You can up to three armaments each to your left and right hands. Oh, that's different from Dark Souls 1. 
All right, so I've got a long sword and a halberd, one shield, and then vagabond knight gauntlets. So if I wanted to change weapons to my halberd, can I? I can one arm that. Oh, that's gonna give me some intense range. What's the speed on that? That's a lot faster. All right, let's open the door. Let there be rolling. Oh, I love that callback. Really slow door open animation. The Chapel of Anticipation. What was this guy doing? Blocked shut. So is there a secret passage somewhere? How did this guy die? Why did that... Okay, I'm going to have to stop reading all of these notes players leave because I'm going to just wander around trying to find secrets the entire broadcast and that's probably a huge waste of everyone's time. Where's the secret entrance that the guy was talking about? Hidden path ahead. Where's the hidden path? Over there, it says. Maybe it's around around this side. Craig Euler says, hey, Ox, here's for the Tooth Fairy Fund. Super stoked you're playing this. Thank you. All right, I'm not going to waste any more time on this. Oh. There is a path over there. Look, there's a staircase going up to the right. How do we get over there? Oh, he died. Right. I probably shouldn't follow him because he died. Joy ahead. Joy ahead. What? All right. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to keep on going. Camera controls. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, how was I? <laughs> I'm glad I read the message. I might have missed that. Oh, we can get down here, of course. I'd better just leave the starting area or else I'm, I never will. <clears throat> I'm just going to walk around and explore every corner. Try attacking. Attacking? Didn't expect a message. All right, well, this message about the secret door is going to bother me. Maybe they're just trolling me. But you never know with Dark Souls. There's always some secret here. Oh. Try jumping. What? Down there? You want me to try jumping down there? <laughs> try jumping! Sure! Just, I'm gonna ignore these guys now. I, they're trying to get me killed. This is what this is. They're just trolling new players. Try jumping. Screw this. There's our go.
try jumping my butt. Do I go over here? I wonder what's over here. I'm not gonna read it. That's it, I've learned my lesson. I'm no longer reading your messages. But I'm really curious. What did they write? I'm not gonna read, oh fine. Still no item. All the more suff stuff suffering, oh suffering. So it lo looks like they were all looking for items too, secrets. Oh, somebody put one over there. How did they get over there? Stop! Is there a way I can just turn this off? I see these glowing messages and I want to read them, but they're not part of the game. I'm just gonna keep dying. I'm not even past the first part. I'm at the beginning of the game and I've died twice. <laughs> what did I tell you all? At the very beginning, I told you, just don't watch me. I'm not good. David Hill, with a donation of stars. Thank you, David Hill. Right. Okay, making progress. <laughs> We're getting out of the starting area. What is all this? See, the problem is that I've played Dark Souls 1, and I know that they do hide things in every little corner. And sometimes it's really important, like a rusty iron ring that makes it so that you don't get bogged down in swamps. Ah! Dead! I didn't even get a hit off. Oh, is that a scripted death? I think that's a scripted death. MG says, having a rough time, sir. I'm doing fine. I'm okay, really. This one doesn't count. It was a scripted death. So I've only died twice. So that's two shots. If you're doing the shots every time I die, that's only two. You're not drunk yet. You're okay. Got a house. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Hmm. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. Toxic Sean says, nah, we drunk. It's not my fault. I mean, I am dying, but it's not my fault. Michael Den Best says, nothing ventured, nothing gained, my friend. Good luck. Thank you, Michael. Oh, I'm still alive. <clears throat> All right. Where are we? New flask of crimson tears. New flask of cerulean tears. First off, I've failed. Yeah, you and me both, guy. All right, let's see. How do we switch between them? Where are we? Oh, there's a secret up there. Whoa, what's this? Ah! 
That's not a player, that's a ghost. Ooh, it's down there. Can I talk to it? I can't! Brave, tarnished, take the plunge of learning and remembrance. Recall the arts of war and your warrior's blood. Take the plunge? Does that mean he wants me to jump down there? Okay. But what's the secret over here? Like, how do I get up there to get that? E, HUD display. He tried shooting it. Do I have a bow? I don't. Behold dark! Okay. Is anyone gonna tell me how to get that? Dark. Yes, it's dark. Thank you everybody for telling me that it's dark. I can see it's dark, but how do I get up there? All right, well, we're going to try and take a plunge. After all, that's what the guy said. And he's a ghost, and ghosts know what they're talking about. That's why they're dead, after all. Wait a minute. I think we can survive this. Take a plunge. I mean, I know there's a big staircase over there. Stairway to heaven and all that, but I'm going to take a plunge. Using items. R to use. Arrow key to switch. Really? That's how I swap out? Okay, so that heals my mana, that heals my health. Okay. Praise the skeletons! Praise them, O oh skeletons! Sights of Grace. Resting at a site of grace will restore your HP, FP, and cleanse any status ailments. It will also refill your sacred flasks. Okay, so it's like a bonfire in Dark Souls. However, most of the enemies you've defeated will be revived. You can find sites of grace by going where light converges. These explanations are acquired in the form of info items and can be accessed from the inventory at any time. Oh. Messages. With the messages menu, you can write messages that players in other worlds can read at the spot where you left them. You can change the message format to leave more complex messages, and also attach gestures to your messages. You can write other players' messages. Whenever another player writes a message that you've written, your HP will be replenished. Really? Oh, cool! Templates. Something ahead, no something ahead, something required ahead. Oh, so we, it's not a free-for-all. We can't write whatever we want. Oh, interesting. Oh, wait, this one we can. No. Oh, I can't write what I want. Interesting. I wanted to write uh, Oxhorn was here, but no. Cool. All right, well, where do I find the other messages? Oh. Flasks. Early days. Add charge to flask. Use one go oh. Use one golden seed to increase your number of flask uses. That's the golden seed I got at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Let's do it. Cool. Increase amount replenished by flasks. Use sacred tear. Do I have one? No sacred tear in inventory. Allocate flask charges. With this menu, you can allocate the number of uses in each of your flasks. You have a set total of maximum flask uses. You can decide how many of those uses are for the HP replenishing flask of Crimson Tears, and how many are for the FP replenishing flask of Cerulean Tears. Let's go five for the flask of health. 
Uh, memorize spell. I don't have any spells. So is that not where you level up? Well, I don't have any souls, or I guess they're called runes here. So, no reason to level up just yet. Ooh, who's that guy? Is that a bad guy or a good guy? I think he was bad. He's dead now. He didn't attack me, though. Did I just kill a good guy? I should probably read these messages. Lovable sword ahead. Gosh, that attack was so slow that I totally botched my parry. That wasn't a lovable sort, by the way. Guarding. Use an armament in your left hand or both hands to guard against incoming attacks. Guarding is especially effective when done with a shield. Guarding consumes stamina. If your stamina runs out, your stance will be broken. Dodging. You can avoid enemy attacks with a dodge roll or a back step. Both of these actions consume stamina. W plus space dodge roll, space back step. Oh, I was trying to do a back stab on him, but that didn't really work so well. Backstabs are so difficult in Dark Souls games. Someone's shooting at me. Who's shooting at me? Wielding armaments. Each hand can be equipped with up to three armaments, allowing you to toggle between them. Armaments can also be two-handed, making attacks more difficult to repel with shields and boosting effective strength by 50%. And it's the arrow keys. Okay. God, I hate these guys. These are like the skeletons at the very beginning of Dark Souls 1. Got it. There we go. All right, so I took a Is that good as two-handed, though? No, that just switches out the weapon. Ugh. That was the guy who was shooting at me from above. All right. Skills. 
Armaments have special abilities called skills. Skills are highly varied and range from powerful attacks to temporary effects. Using skills consumes FP. Shift plus right click. That's just parry. And I suck at parry. Crouching. Crouching to make it harder for enemies to discover you, especially effective in tall grass. Attacking an enemy that hasn't noticed you will cause more damage than usual. There's a good backstab, finally. I guess I misjudged the distance on that one. Stance breaking. Some attacks may break an enemy's stance, giving you a chance to perform a critical hit. Charge attacks and jump attacks make it particularly easy to break an enemy's stance. Hold shift and left click to charge attack, shift and left click while jumping to jump attack. Shift. Stakes of Marika. Upon dying, you will be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. However, if there is a stake of Marika near to where you died, you can choose to be revived there instead. Oh. Uh-oh, that's a waterfall. That means I got a boss coming. Wayne Azing says, take my money. Also, I can't watch this now because I cannot spoil anything for myself. Thank you, Oxhorn, you mad lad for giving the Soul Series a try. Hardcore, hardcore, hardcore to the mega. Thank you, Wayne Azing. <laughs> Disco Elysium viewer there. D uh, Toxic Sean says, been a hard couple of weeks, needed this. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Toxic Sean. It has been a hard couple of weeks for a great, very, uh, great many people. The Witcher, or the Watcher with a sticker tip. Thank you, the Watcher. All right, hold on. I want to see how I can do a jumping attack. If I run and then shift and then jump. Okay. All right, waterfall with a blood stain just outside. Great. Come on! I was gonna do a jump attack, but now I've got this thing in my face. Guard counters. You can perform a counter attack immediately after blocking an enemy attack. Guard counters make it easy to break an enemy's stance. Shift left click immediately after blocking an attack is a guard counter. Was highly effective. Oh, cool. So when I block, so shift left click, so it's hold right click and shift to parry. Hold right click to block, and then I counter with a shift left click. Gosh, it's a little complicated. All right, so that's where he came from. What's over here? We're back here. Oh, this is that sparkly that we saw from below. But then wait a minute. How do we get to the one that was over there? New strength. Strength plus one. We can find new 
Stat attributes? Okay, cool. Well, that was great. So I could jump down there, but... How do I get to the sparkly that we found over there? Well, let's retrace our steps just a little bit to see if we can find a way over there. There's this big hole over here, and I don't know if we can slip through there. No. Oh, that's just where we came from. I see. Okay. There's got to be a false wall somewhere then. This game has a lot of false... Well, Dark Souls has a lot of false walls. Well, I don't see it from over here, so let's just keep going. Let's jump. Hello, you. Okay. So the question is, how do we get that? It's gonna drive me crazy. It's probably something really cool too. Oh well, I'm not gonna belabor it. Let's keep going. Hey, oh, another waterfall. Hold on, it's sparkly. Cooperative multiplayer. Use Tarnished's furled finger to write a gold summon sign. Cooperative multiplayer will begin once you have been summoned by a player from another world. You will take the role of an ally, a furled finger, and your objective is to defeat the area boss. The compass at the top of the screen indicates the direction of the summoner, the host of fingers. That's one thing in Dark Souls I never really did was any of the multiplayer. So this is still a bit confusing for me. I got a finger severer and a tarnished full fing furl finger. And that's a waterfall, which means it's a boss. The big question is, do I go through the waterfall and fight the boss? Or do I keep going up the steps?
Oh, that looks like an elevator. So let's fight the boss. What? Oh, it's not what I thought it was. Oh, wait. Use the stone wood key? No stone wood key in inventory. Try look carefully. Fighting a key? The Stonewood key, that was one of the things we could have gotten when we made our character at the beginning of the game, right? No lover ahead? What? Try look carefully. Oh man, I gotta have a key to fight this boss? I am trying to look carefully. All right, well, I guess we can do the boss. Okay, so that's a switch, and it's going to push that up. Well, what happens if it's already down? Oh, of course they put a message right on top of the switch. Of course they do, guys. Oh, I guess I can't activate it if it's already down. Alright, let's go up. It's the only thing we can do. Whoa! <laughs> Somebody went and died of going down or something. Hello, what's this? What's oh, another message? Could this be an item? Well, these guys are having the same idea as I am. They're like, break everything to try and find this key. Could this be a precious item? Lovable sort. <laughs> They're trolling me. Got these glowies by all of these pots. And of course, they're just messages, no item. Right. Alright, I haven't found an item in any of these pots. Do they not have items in pots in this game? Whoa. Oh my god. Oh, I'm immediately intimidated by just how huge this looks. Okay, well, they're not telling us what to do, so we gotta figure it out. I'm guessing we go to the giant castle on this hillside. Is that where we go? What's around back? Acquire materials. In every corner of the lands between, you will find fruits and flowers, mushrooms and butterflies, and various other useful materials. These materials can be used for item crafting. We got Roa fruit. Oh, is this going to be like the eagles that can fly me to a new area? Hello, friendly eagle. Wow. Look at this. So cool. 
Oh, there's a kid back here. Oh, wait, no, that's a... What? What is that? It's like a kangaroo fox. Oh, and it goes even further behind. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, a giant crab. I bet you he's a boss. Oh, I can't wait to explore this world. guys do it. Hello, little kangaroo fox. I won't hurt you. Alright, is there any way up there to find the secret passage? Probably not. Let's just keep going. Toxic Sean says, giant castle. What's round the back, faux playa? Thank you, Toxic Sean. Alright, I want to explore each of these things. Um, what's this? Summoning po pools. In each area, you may find effigies of martyrs. These effigies are summoning pools. You'll find it easy to summon other players at these locations as co-op and hostile summoning signs created with small effigies gather at summoning pools. Small golden effigy. Guidance of Grace. Grace exists to guide the tarnished and lead them along the proper path. Even now, some sites of Grace retain that power. Their golden rays will guide you along the way. Okay, so follow the golden rays. And this one is pointing me that way. Towards the church? Is that the ruins of a church? Okay, I guess that's what I need to go to. The map. Use your map to check your current position, as well as the terrain and surrounding structures. You can update your map with new information by finding map fragments at steles along the road. You can also use the map to freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Map menu. With the map menu, you can check your current position and terrain and buildings in the surrounding area. You can also freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Lastly, through your map, you can select any site of grace that you've discovered and travel there instantly, instantaneously. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. Okay, so I'm here. Stranded Graveyard. that hmm. well this person hasn't attacked me presumably she's peaceful oh yes tarnished are we come to the lands between for the Elden Ring hmm? of course you have no shame in it Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Ugh. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, okay. a path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. 
Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. <laughs> okay, so no quest markers, but instead we've got these glowing trails that point off in the direction we need to go. Presumably that castle over there. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Drafted. It's time you set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale on the cliff, where Grace would guide you. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. Anything else? It's time you set off, I should think. To cast if you... S right, so she says it. I need to go to the castle on the cliff. Cool. I can do that. What's with the bones we find everywhere? Oh, that looks like a bad dude. Should I attack that big bad dude in golden armor on a horse? Probably not. Oh man, I want on there. What is this? Just a big ruined temple. Nothing interesting? Okay, well, I'm going to avoid the Golden Knight thing, if I can. Oh, hey, dude. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to get in your way. Uh, blessings upon your horse. Dude, I don't want any, man. I died. Rockland F says, lol, in a way you're almost doing Game of Thrones and Dark Souls. Never say never, I guess. I guess. All right. I mean, I could I kill that guy? Death. Upon dying, you will be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. You will drop any runes in your possession at the site of your death. If you die again before reclaiming those runes, they will be lost forever. The compass at the top of the screen indicates the direction of the lost runes. Oh, God. Why is there a giant golden knight in my path? this ruined fragments is that goat rolling but the goat is rolling downhill I'm finding ruined fragments but I don't know what they mean All right I died over there I think I can get past him this way But I gotta get my my 
my runes. There we go. Okay, Church of Ele. So this is where the Golden Path was sending us. We've got another touch of grace here. I mean, I really want to kill that guy. Fast travel to Sight of Grace. Through your map, you can instantly... Yeah, didn't we get this one? Hey, look, it's Santa Claus. Hi, Santa. You're a tarnished. I can see it, but I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. Cool. About Kale. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. Recommendation? You know, if you can spare the runes, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really, if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle, and I admit, I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every custom accounts, after all. Okay, he wants me to buy a crafting kit. Shop menu. With the shop menu, you can spend runes to purchase various items. You can also sell items for runes. Each merchant stocks a different variety of items for purchase. No name says Santa bot is better, but from Fallout 76. All right, telescope, finger remedy, cracked pot, crafting kit. That's, hey, I can afford it. 300. Cookbooks. Oh, God. Oh, I should probably get a torch so I can see in dark places. That's 200, though. How much do I have got? I've only got 300 left. Flask of Wondrous Physique. Waypoint Ruins. I don't know what those do. Item effect, note imparting knowledge in brief. Waypoint Ruins. Should I buy it? It's 200. you took my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. If you have a crafting kit, you can make various items from materials that you find. Select item crafting from the main menu to make items. You can learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. Containers. You will <clears throat> need cracked pots or other containers to craft certain items. You will not be able to make more of those items than you have containers. Container items will run out with use, but the containers themselves will remain. Strengthening armaments. At a smithing table, you can spend runes and smithing stones to strengthen your armaments. Somewhere in the lands between, you may meet a blacksmith who can make your armaments even stronger. I found a smithing stone. Uh, strengthen armament. With the smithing menu, you can spend runes and smithing stones, blah, blah, blah. Uh, strengthen them up to plus three at a smithing table. 250. I shouldn't have bought the stinking map. Okay, what about item crafting? Here we go. 
With the item crafting menu, you can make various items from materials that you find. You can learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. Ooh. Rainbow stone. Shines with colored light when placed, serving as a guide. I can make it with ruin fragments. So it's like a beacon I can put down. Roa Raisin. On horseback, feed to Torrent to restore HP. I don't have Torrent yet. I'm going to try and fight this horse guy. so well <laughs> oh my god so I gotta kill him without getting hit once really Is he tough? And I don't like the speed of this halberd at all. Fine. I'll come back for him. All right, so now I need to go that way. All right. Wait, I want to see that fragment that I bought. Oh, does it go to the map? What was the point of that thing that I bought? All right, clearly it's pointing me up here. So I need to follow this road. Hey, turtle. All right. Golden room. Are those turtle eggs? Oh. Oh. Poison Bloom.
Ooh. What is this? Those were bad guys, right? I mean, they didn't really put up much of a fight. I'm assuming they were bad guys. They looked just like the bad guys that attacked us back in the... Uh, back in the crypt. What are the... Oh, they're pointing up there, so... I'm going the wrong way. I need to go into the forest. Yeah, my path is blocked by this big cliff. Oh, hey, dude. Vanquishing enemy groups. Vanquishing an enemy group will replenish your flasks. The number and type of flasks to re be replenished varies depending on the enemy group. You cannot replenish more flasks than your maximum. Hello, what's that? We found a door. Is this our first dungeon? What do other people have to say? Be wary of keep moving. Good luck. Didn't expect an underground tomb. Stormfoot Catacombs. Am I supposed to be here? Anthony Chang says follow the path, not this. But it's a catacombs. I love exploring catacombs. A proper death means returning to the Ed Erd tree. Have patience until the time comes and the roots call to you. Oh. Does that mean I'm not supposed to be here yet? Goblin Bella! <laughs> what was that? Oh, goblins! Them. Root resin. It was scary. Friendship. Locked by some contraption. There's one gargoyle up there. There's another one up there.
They jumped down to get me! Oh, and I'm suffering blood loss. Is that like poison? Okay, so there's a path off to the right. had over 900 runes on me as well. There was a guy hiding behind the wall. Of course, I charged right for the guy throwing knives at me. Completely ignored the guy behind the wall. What was down here, I wonder? Oh, this is where I went. That was the door that was locked, right. Harder than it needed to be. I was too slow. Ah. 
The other one died somehow. Okay, this is where I died. I got my souls back. Okay. Pillage remains, summoning spirits. With a spirit calling bell, you can use ashes to summon various spirits. Summoning typically consumes FP. You can only summon one type of spirit at a time. You cannot summon spirits during multiplayer. Wandering noble ashes? Okay, is this it for the dungeon or? Yeah, because that's the way out. Is there anything down the fire paths? That's the question. Yeah. Three of them. Four of them. Five of them. Holy cow, that's a lot of them. to doggone gargoyles! Oh. <laughs> 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 Alright, at least I know where my souls are. I can get them easily. They're not in a tricky area. Then I can explore the rest. And I got whatever was on that body. Okay, and this is the way out. 1600 so- Ah! I forgot. A 
Okay, now the, now the next question is, is there something down the other fire path? We gotta find out. Yes! Prattling Pate, hello. Something incredible ahead. All the more visions of friendship. What is Prattling Pate, hello? You miss a voice that says hello? Twisted clay sculpt in the head shape of a human head emits a voice that says hello. A wistful fetish that imparts voices and words on an eternal journey. Wandering noble ashes. What even is that? <laughs> okay. Well, now we got to get out of here alive. Fire die? Why is there no more fire? What happened? What did I do? What did I do? Is it because I said hello? I'm so confused. Okay, well, I don't know what I did to uh, to destroy that fire thing, but I I got through it. Now just to deal with these jokers. Did they get burned? Nope. is still locked by some contraption. I feel like I didn't finish whatever I needed to do in here. You hit the fire thing and it retracts to stop the fire. Oh. Breadbus says you can hit them to stop them. Your roll hit it. Also, check that second level below the area you climbed the ladder to. It has goodies. All right. Thank you.
Okay, so now I know how to get rid of the pillars. I don't know how to open that door. That's the big mystery. And what the heck is this hello thing that I got? Somewhere a heavy door has opened. Bingo. Okay. Ooh. Do we go deeper? <laughs> Is it always a boss? Therefore, skill required ahead. It's a boss! was rough. Uh, let's get our souls back at least, if we can. I should have spent my souls. I was stupid. Whoop. Wait a minute, where's the door? my souls back.
If I die right next to the waterfall, maybe I can get him back and get the heck out of there. Two-handed weapon, Ox. Am I two-handing the weapon? Hit and run? Yeah, maybe I maybe I should hit and run. That halberd is just so slow. I don't know how to two-hand hold hold it. Left hand, right hand. It's not telling me how to go to two-handed. Dr. Silver says, Ox, for the love of God, find a controller, you absolute madman. I hate controllers. Bill Phillips says, use the hello? Oh! A shot. I'll try anything once. Care, man. That didn't work! You're not supposed to say hello to the kitty cat. That's, that's not how you pacify the thing. No hello. We'll skip hello. All those souls gone, I can't believe it. God, what do I even do? I'm 
I'm rolling out of the way, but I can't roll fast enough or far enough. Redbus says you need to roll faster and shed some armor. Show us some skin. All right. Floaty kitty monster, this is just awful. Can't you lock on, says Raven? I can, but then I can't run away. I'm going to try one more time. And if I can't win, then I just lose those souls. So stupid. What a stupid boss. I hate it so much. Axe in Media Seattle says, Ox, what if you make the cat destroy all of the columns? Maybe they're load bearing. One more. Eliza says, any far distance weapons? None that are fast enough. This is just. The halberd is slow as hell. 
Can I get him to destroy all of the columns? flying cat thing I'm uh, I'm not doing this guy anymore if I could figure out what it was what the what the strategy was Really, the only place where I can get a ton of hits in on him is when he's shooting that fire. When he's shooting the fire, I can stand to the side of him and get a couple of hits on him and then dodge the fire. But the thing is, he doesn't use it very much and all of his other attacks are giant flying stabs and stomps and whirlwinds and it's like, I can't get close to him. I gotta try one more time, just one more time and then I promise I'll be done and then I'll move on. I just, I, I gotta, Try if I if I can get him to do the fire thing. I think I can get him.
stupid. Ah, so stupid. Well, we're definitely getting a Dark Souls experience from this new game. And you know what? He'll be there. He's not going anywhere. He'll always be there if I ever feel lonely. Okay, well, maybe I was trying to bite off a little bit more than I could chew a little bit early on. After all, the big beam of light was sending us towards this road, which is guarded by a guy with a torch. That guy. Eliza Wolf M says, I believe you need a heavy bow and to hit it in the head. Maybe. See, I don't have anything long range. I don't have magic. I don't have a bow. So I'll come back again when I can do that. Well, that was 16,000 souls I've lost. I wonder why the backstab didn't work. Okay, there's the castle. Is that where is that where it was pointing? Is that where I need to go? What's this down here? One criticism I have of the game is whenever I'm trying to move like this, it's trying to move my camera as well. So it's hard for me to keep my camera in the right position. Try stealth. Thanks. Group ahead, therefore try defeating one by one. Good call. Edward J says, Ox, you missed my previous super chat. All right, let me see if I can scroll up. I was a little preoccupied. Let's see. He says, see if you can summon that wandering noble from those ashes. Oh. How do you summon a wandering noble? Summons five wandering noble spirits. Well, the problem is that all of the cat's attacks are like All right. All right. Let's put it. All right, I'll try it. Oh, the chat is saying that I need I need a story item in order to summon. Okay, so I can't summon them yet. All right, never mind.
Gatefront Ruins. One by one is a good strategy. Let's see if I can find a way to do that. Oh, there's the next grace. I botched that. I botched that real bad. Wait for this guy to come up and turn around. Oh, there are two of them. Shoot. Oh, okay. So we got to do them both when they're turned around. And he's got a horn. Does that mean he, he calls back up? Oh, there's another guy over there. Oh, and another guy over there. Ooh, tricky, tricky, tricky. FP cost, wait. So why can't, oh, I need a dex of 18. That requires a dex of 14. So I need to start putting uh, points into dexterity. The Astro Nerd Boy says, ha ha, sneak attacks for the win. I know, right? This is much easier than the cat fire sword guy. I'll take this guy any day. That's tricky. Okay.
Oh god. Oh, there's one more dog guy. Okay, I think I've got one more. Ooh, there's a staircase leading down. This guy looks like a boss. Oh God. Almost dead. Gotcha. Ooh. All right. And that refilled my Estus flasks because I killed all of the group. Oh God, I had a sliver of life there. Hooey. Now there's a bunch of treasure chests around here. And what's this? Estelle, Steely. New map, Limgrave West. Behold map. New map has been found, Limgrave West. All right, that was the catacombs. That's the gate front ruins. That's where I need to go. I wonder what's all this down here, though. Great sword. Hey. I can't do the... 
I need strength of 16. <sighs> Alright, so I gotta put points into strength to use the great sword. Let's see what was in that staircase. Golden rune, cool. Ah, destruction. <laughs> Treasure chest. Treasure chest ahead. Okay. Is that a mimic? Adding skills. With a whetstone knife, you can use Ashes of War to grant your armaments new skills at Sites of Grace. An armament can only have one skill. Any skill it previously had will be removed. An armament's type determines what skills it can have. Some special armaments have unique skills and cannot be granted new ones. With a whetstone knife, you can alter affinities to your armaments at Sites of Grace.